going to get to hear from Jason, but before we do, we, we thought in advance of the event that we needed to have someone to introduce him. And uh, when you think about an entrepreneur and all that goes into the kind of um, mentality and, and work that makes an entrepreneur, we thought we can't just have someone that's known Jason for a few months or even a few years really felt compelled to go back as early as we could to get someone who really knew Jason well. Um, so I'd like to invite now uh, his father, uh, Dr. Ron Webb, to come forward and introduce Jason. And by the way, um, I'd, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that uh, Ron was a longtime chair of the Department of Management and Business. And, uh, just did an incredible job of uh, helping to bring us to where we are today. And, uh, and by the way, if uh, Ron doesn't do justice, we have Jason's wife, Mandy, here as well, who's welcome to come up and add anything that she would like to say. It's not every day you get a chance to introduce your own son uh, at an event like this, so it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure for me. Uh, and David stole a little bit my words because... Uh, I, uh, I've known him for a long time. I ought to be able to do this, right? Uh, I won't tell you about some of the early years, uh, the years of diapers and potty training and any of those kinds of things, uh, although I've got a lot of notes on that if anybody would like to learn more about that later. Uh, so I'll skip over some of those earlier years. Well, I will come back to one thing in a minute uh, that, uh, that I'll conclude with in terms of the introduction. But as it says, he was a 98 grad of Messiah, he was an accounting major. He did well in the classroom and on the soccer pitch. Uh, magna cum laude, if I remember correctly, an All-American soccer player. Uh, mom and dad are proud of that. Uh, and many other things in his life, including his uh, lovely wife. Um, but from there he went to, uh, first of all, he's played uh, soccer that summer uh, for the Charlotte Eagles professionally in, in North Carolina. Then began a, a, a relatively short career with KPMG down in Baltimore as a, as a CPA. Soccer was still in his blood, so he wanted to go back and play some more soccer, which he did. Uh, that led to uh, a time at Harrisburg with the Harrisburg Heat, playing professional soccer with them as well. And then a series of adventures. Uh, uh, I said adventures or ventures? Uh, both, I guess. Uh, you know, an entrepreneur's resume is, is never clean. Uh, you, you look at my resume, and it's one date here and there and so on. A, res, a resume of an entrepreneur is not like that. There are too many overlapping kinds of things. Uh, so at one point, uh, you see kettle corn in front of you. Uh, that was a venture that, that started, uh, uh, interestingly enough. Uh, then he was involved in a kind of an internal venture capital business of Zyflex. Uh, he and his current partner uh, were working in that. Zyflex is a base layer, thermal, undergarment kind of a thing that had a great future, uh, except that Under Armour uh, began about the same time and had quite a uh, marketing budget of their own. Uh, then he got into flipping houses, uh, not only doing that individually, but with a business, Green Street Properties. One of his partners from there, Wendell, is, is here. Uh, they flipped uh, many, many houses in Harrisburg. And even got to the point of working with the, uh, the city to uh, rename part of the city to uh, uh, Old Uptown. So they were involved in the, in the venture in the city as well. Then, uh, let's see, did I get everything? Crazy adventures? I guess then shock soccer shots came along. Uh, he and a soccer friend partner down in uh, North Carolina were doing this uh, thing with kids three to five, seven-year-old kids, uh, uh, teaching them the basic skills of soccer, along with uh, character-related education curriculum as well, and uh, we're doing well. And a couple of their friends decided to uh, 
kind of find out more about it. Uh, could we do that kind of a thing? And one thing led to the next, and it became a uh, franchising operation. It began with uh, two partners, and then when it got into franchising, it was something that they do nothing about. They hired uh, a third partner, Justin Brenneman, who's sitting here, who had been working with Annie Ann's, uh, came on board uh, a few years ago, and now there's three partners in this venture of Soccer Shots. Uh, headquartered here in the, uh, in the Harrisburg area, but with franchises all over the country, more than 100 franchises now, and we even say that they're uh, globally, because they have at least one in Vancouver, I think, and uh, maybe elsewhere. Uh, but uh, enough said for me, except for one more thing. Um, very early on, uh, his mother and I uh, knew that Jason was different uh, in lots of ways. Uh, but the one that I'll share with you is related to his entrepreneurial spirit. Back in the late 80s, we were living in Colorado. Uh, I was on a year-long sabbatical, and Jason was in sixth grade, I believe. And as we were there over that year, we began to see, for the first time, uh, some yogurt shops open up. TCBY opened up, I think, in uh, Colorado Springs, and maybe one or two others. This was the beginning of that movement. And a sixth grader, uh, Jason, came to me and said, Dad! When we go back to Camp Hill, where we were living, when we go back, we've got to open a shop. And uh, we've got to get into that business. And I gave him about a half a dozen reasons why I didn't think that would work in central Pennsylvania. And uh, that was the end of the story. Until about a year later, when in central Pennsylvania, one store after another started opening up. I mean, it was just like on every street corner, there was a yogurt shop opening up of one kind or another. And I kind of remember Jason kind of looking at me saying, Dad, Dad, you know, kind of like, that could have been us. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, it was very early on in his life that, uh, that we sensed that there was an entrepreneurial spirit uh, in him. And we've been in, uh, just delighted to kind of watch it mature over these few years. Uh, Jason? Everybody. Thanks for coming out here. You've got to believe there are better things going on Tuesday morning than, than y'all being here. So thank you all for coming. I'm very happy that you're here. Thanks, Dad. What you may not know about Dan, he didn't share. Dan and I actually played soccer together growing up. And I've, um, as you'll hear a little bit about today, my story of, of ventures, many, uh, they're twined by past uh, relationships, friendships, playing soccer experiences. So I've just really enjoyed uh, having opportunity to do business with friends and Dan's been a fantastic partner and was a very good soccer player back in the day. He's probably still pretty good today too. So um, thanks Dan, Alonzo, and Dr. Hagenbu and the committee for uh, inviting me to be here. I'm delighted to, to be here. Um, I just, I, I have so much to appreciate um, when it comes to Messiah College and um, this group here, my, my old friends from Messiah, faculty, who I see here today, I apologize that I'm not an accountant. You all tried very hard to make me an accountant. I didn't turn into one. Um, but the business department alum is, is, is a special group. And I'm thankful that the college is supportive of these kinds of events. And uh, Dr. Phipps, thanks for being here. Um, it's, it's really great to be able to do business locally in this community. And so often I, I run into uh, Messiah alums or people that just have great respect for Messiah and its alums, and, and it makes doing business and working in this region um, a privilege, and, and I'm really proud of that. I um, wanted to thank just a couple of people, kind of point a couple of people out who um, are Messiah-related and who have impacted me. One of them is, uh, is my old college soccer coach, Dave Brandt, who I'm sure is not here today. He's a Messiah alum as well. Um, Dave is one of those guys, I, I look back at, at my career at Messiah, and i um, my senior year was Dave's first year as head soccer coach. Um, he had been the assistant prior to that. 
I, I look at that year and I, I'm reminded of how Dave literally willed our team to the, the success that we had. And we were not a great bunch, but that was who Dave was and that was in his character. And Dave is somebody who now, 20 some odd years later, is somebody who I'm still impacted by simply by watching his career and his um, desire to achieve excellence in what he does and to, to create something that's special. And Brad and Aaron have done a great job of carrying on that tradition. If anybody's curious to know how Dave is doing, he's doing quite well at the Naval Academy. He's unbeaten in his last six games. He's off to his best season yet. And so um, he's continuing his tradition of, of excellence. And he's somebody that I'm, I'm thankful for in terms of uh, impact on me. Another person, his name was already mentioned, uh, is another business partner I've had and still have, and that's Wendell Hoover, who's here. Uh, my dad mentioned that I've done a little bit of, of stuff with real estate, and I would be lying if I didn't say that everything that I know about real estate, I either know from Wendell or in working with Wendell. And those were, that's a venture, but those were mostly adventures. <laughs> Some, someday I could tell you a, a bunch of good stories about real estate. And, and finally, uh, Dad. So I need to tell a story about Dad and, and my mom. Um, back to uh, the, the TCBY, and, and I always had an itch, I suppose, a desire to do something with business. And I used to, before I truly understood what my dad was as an educator and as a professor, I used to break it down at, at dinner. This was probably middle school and into high school. I'd say, Dad, okay, so help me get this straight. You're, you're a professor at Messiah College, right? You're, you're Dr. Webb. You're the chairman of the business department. There are students, right, who are aspiring to be businessmen and women, right? There are graduate assistants, maybe. Then there's then there's other professors. There's people with master's degrees, right? You're, you're higher than them, right, Dad? Uh, yeah. Then there's other people on staff who have their doctorate as well, right? But you're the chairman of the business department. You're like the top business guy. Are we going to start a business or what? Don't you know everything about business? And he would remind me that his path has been education. And um, I, I appreciate all that my dad and, and my mom have given me as it relates to working with people, um, having a strong work ethic, um, working with a, with a service bent leadership style. And I think that the values that you all have, have instilled have um, transcended Kind of anything that I would choose to do, and I'm, I'm deeply thankful for that. So I am going to tell you a little bit about soccer shots this morning. I wanted to go back to two other Maasai people that have impacted me and influenced me, and I'm even going to add to this and say third because I forgot to circle a face. Peter was not. Um, you told me you weren't coming today because you were supposed to be in another country. So Peter Greer. Peter was my roommate through college and um, another person of, of great influence on my life. Peter was on this team. This is the team from 1995 at Messiah College. The other two circled guys are my business partners and, and guys that I could and should be up here with me telling this story. Jeremy Sorzano is pictured there in the top. Justin Bredeman is, is pictured there in the middle. And I'm pictured there in the front row. And this was the class of 95. Cool thing about these guys, they were two years older than me, Justin and Jeremy. And um, they, were, they were the guys that I, I wanted to be like. They were the upperclassmen that were great soccer players, but were um, leaders on campus, leaders on the soccer team. They were captains of the team. And I've always claimed that, uh, that the team of 95 was the best team to have never won a national championship. I didn't want to say something this morning that wasn't true, though. So I had to, I had to provide fact to that. And so I actually emailed Dave Brandt this week, and I asked Dave, I said, can you confirm that the 95 team was the best team at Messiah to have not won a national championship? And his response, I don't know if you can read that, but he lists 95 as the best team in the modern era before the dynasty started not to win one. And so I think I've got this right. He also went on to point out all of the other teams during his coaching tenure that should have won national championships. And I did the math. Dave actually, he either won or claims he should have won every year he was <laughs> at Messiah. I'm sticking to 95 as the team. So more than, more than the business itself, more than soccer shots and what we do, one of the things that I really, really love most is uh, just working 
with my buddies. These are guys that I've known for 20 years. We've, uh, we've done away trips together as college soccer teammates. We've been into other countries of the world together. Uh, we travel around the United States kind of laughing about what it is that we do, but just enjoying each other's company. And I'm, I'm really grateful for these two guys. Um, people, people sometimes like to ask, so how does that work? They call me Webby. Webby, how does that work? Do you guys, three of you, right? Who does what? Do you guys get along? You know, all of these things. And so I thought um, maybe I'd point out the fact that we are quite different, me, Justin, and Jeremy. And there's probably no better way to explain that than maybe just, just to tell a quick story. So recently, we got some new shirts. Now, I have a picture up here. These are not the shirts that we got, although those were new shirts too. But we got some new shirts recently, and, and it was um, – it was Justin's idea to get some new shirts. Justin, th this maybe gets a little bit to how the three of us are different. Justin likes to get, look good. Justin, Justin always looks good. He's just one of those guys. He's one of these guys that irons his shirt before wearing it on a regular basis. He probably brushes his teeth two times a day. He's just one of those guys, right? He's got his act together, speaks eloquently, you know. Um, he's polished behind his back, although now the cat's out of the bag. Just Jeremy and I sometimes refer to Justin as our corporate partner. It's a little bit more corporate than us. So it was Justin's idea that we get some new shirts. He wanted to get some embroidered Oxfords, some Oxford shirts that were embroidered. So I'm the accountant in the group, and my response was, do we really need these new shirts? You know, I've had this polo that's working well. It's three years old, but it works just fine, right? And I'm not always a joy kill, I hope, but I'm practical minded and I'm sometimes critical of change, to be fair, and I tend to protect what's been. So that's that's kind of my my difference. So Jeremy, man, if Jeremy was here. So Jeremy's a lot, let me just put it this way, Jeremy's a lot of things that Justin is not. <laughs> so that's kind of a compliment. Um, Jeremy's response to this idea of getting a new Oxford shirt was he just asked the question, probably with some food in his mouth, he asked this question, what's in Oxford? Is that a shirt with a collar on it? So this comes from a guy who has his own category of clothing called dress t-shirts. That's a big day for Jeremy. So here's, here's how it works though. Um, Jeremy, Justin, and I, we get along, we have this past together, this history that, that really helps. Um, we choose to work well together. One thing that I think helps is we, we've learned to understand our roles. In fact, uh, we evaluate our roles and our function frequently. We just had a, a meeting together a couple of months ago where we reviewed our roles within the organization. There's, there's alignment and clarity that's um, helpful for us and our success in working together. We recognize that we are um, we're in business for ourselves, but we're not in business by ourselves. We choose to lead by serving. And we, um, that means we serve each other and, and the needs of the company. We value culture and recognize each other's gifts and, and, and abilities. We find ourselves saying things that Leighton Shoemaker once said to us, that Dave said to us, that Brad is now probably telling his players, that our dads told us. Um, we value those, those kinds of things. And so I'm thankful for Justin Bredeman and Jeremy Sorzano as well. And if there's time and we have a chance, I'd love to have Justin come up here. If there's a time for a few questions when we're done, he'd, he'd be uh, best able to answer questions, obviously. So when the committee asked me to speak on entrepreneurship, um, they provided me with two main reasons for selecting this topic. I thought they were good reasons. One was that they said, because we know the next generation of business leaders may be more likely to start their own businesses. And to Dan's point, there's a lot of reasons out there these days that people are starting their own businesses. And they mentioned that they'd like to inspire alumni to use their talents to innovate within their cur current organization. So I thought this topic of entrepreneurship was great. I also realized that I have not once ever studied entrepreneurship in any kind of academic setting. I've never taken a class on entrepreneurship. When I went to Messiah College, that class was not offered. It now is. But I thought, you know, I get Entrepreneur Magazine. Maybe I could come up there and, and say some things that uh, sounded good. But before I, you know, get, get into that, I, I realized, you know, let me, let me at least get a good definition of an entrepreneur. And so I had to go to my go-to source, Wikipedia, or the Internet. 
and I discovered that the definition of an entrepreneur per the internet is this. At the most basic level, an entrepreneur is one who takes risk and initiative to make money, sometimes makes a plan, and forms a business. I thought, that's about right. I think that's how I've, I've done some things in the past. And then I realized, wait, they've missed something. So I crossed that definition out, and I'm giving you the insider tip today. Here's my definition of an entrepreneur. Mandy, hold, close your ears. So mine is this, takes risk and initiative, and then later tells wife what I've been up to. Forms a business, get into that right away, and then sometime later maybe makes a plan. So that's been my path. My dad mentioned there is a lot of overlapping, and there has been to explain the chronological order of the ventures and adventures wouldn't work. Um, there's, there's always one experience that, that leads to um, getting into something else. And so over the years, I have helped to start an organization called Zyflex. I've done some real estate um, adventures. I have the kettle corn operation. I knew that a lot of you guys knew me as the kettle corn guy, and I didn't want to disappoint. So I wanted to make sure you each had a bag of kettle corn to go home with today. So there it is. That's that's the web brand, the Buckwild kettle corn brand of kettle corn at your table. So please take that bag home with you today. Um, in the in the late 90s, Jeremy Sorzano and I were playing soccer together down in Charlotte, North Carolina. And this was the very beginning of the, the concept, which is now soccer shots. As a professional soccer player, in Charlotte, there was a, uh, a need to earn income both during the season and after the season, between seasons. This was a low-budget operation. Jeremy always likes to mention, have you ever seen the movie Bull Durham? And if you have, this is worse than that. So this, there was a, a need to make money. So coaching was a natural fit. Coaching was something that we could do. It was something that we were able to do. We could make some money on that. And so between seasons, during seasons, we found ourselves coaching, coaching kids of all ages, but discovered a niche, and Jeremy was the, the, the true architect of this, discovered a niche opportunity running intro to soccer classes in daycare centers and preschools throughout Charlotte. And so the concept is this, we run these, these once per week, high quality, high energy intro to soccer classes. They last about 30 minutes long. They're designed specifically for kids ages two to eight, although I'd say what we primarily do is work with kids three to five. That's our sweet spot. And our lessons include not just soccer skills, but a little bit of character development. There's a, there's a word of the day each time and all kinds of fun and hilarious games, games which we learned from doing camps at Messiah and doing camps at, um, with the Charlotte Eagles. And so I know what you're probably thinking about what I do because I've heard it all before. I realize what we do is quite simple. After all, it's soccer for kids three to five. How hard can that really be, right? And um, I remember once telling Brad McCarty a little bit about what we do, and he was like, oh, yeah, I used to do that. I was like, okay, right, right. Something else I get a lot is, so what else do you do, right? Let's get to the, the real job that you have. I'm like, no, this is, this is what we do. We do soccer for kids three to five. And so Here's the thing, and, and for anybody with the entrepreneurial bug, you, you know there's a business out there doing just about everything. And if there's something that you're passionate about and that you can work hard at and be good at, you can, you can build a business out of, out of just about anything. And so um, this soccer for three to five-year-olds really, really works for us. Um, so let, let me tell you and explain a little bit more about how it has grown. And, and that kind of gets into a little bit of a timeline which will explain some of the evolutions of entrepreneurship and what entrepreneurship means to me as, as we've grown. So in 2005, and I'll call this the bootstrapping era, from 2005 to 2009, here's what happened. In 2005, we attracted the attention of a couple of friends and discovered that we could perhaps scale our business, grow our business into other cities around the United States through franchising. So franchising is essentially a system for distributing the soccer shot service into other cities through the means of local owners. And these local owners are called franchisees. And so this gets us into the process now of selecting franchisees, the right kind of people to start a soccer shots franchise in another city. 
what's involved in that is is there's the business part of it. Is there's a franchise fee that is paid by a franchisee up front. There's a signed franchise agreement between us, franchisor, and franchisee. Typically, it's a 10-year term with, with renewable terms. There's then an ongoing relationship between franchisee and franchisor. Franchisee needs to grow the business. They pay royalties on what they do. Franchisor is responsible for providing support, um, advice, counsel, training, everything they need to be successful. And so in order to launch this system as a franchise, we essentially had to package the business together. And so we created an, op an operations manual, training courses, curricula, marketing methods, technology, etc. All of these things are what go into buying a, a Soccer Shots franchise. So in 2005, in the early part of this era, we sold, we opened up our, four, our first four franchise locations. They were in Delaware, Cleveland, Ohio, Lancaster, and Miami, Florida. And Justin was one of those four original franchisees. He took the Lancaster territory, which Peter chose not to take. Not that you were our second choice, Justin. <laughs> Um, so 2009 through 2012 and leading up to this year, I've just named this the testing era. What's been, um, what's been cool during this period of time is we've had the chance to test the soccer shots concept into a growing number of new markets. I would say that our business has also been tested over this period of time. It's been tested by an economy that is not what it was when we first started. It's been tested by some rogue franchisees who have had some ideas of their own. It's been tested by competition. There's all kinds of people now out there introducing soccer to kids two to eight. And so these things have, have tested us. And, and really what they've, they've led to is, um, and these are, these are what all entrepreneurs face, I'm sure, on a regular basis, challenges, um, opportunities, and needs to change and to be nimble and to change quickly, new opportunities, just about every day, and fortunately growth. And so we've, we've gone through all of that during this period of time. At the beginning of this era, in 2009, Jeremy and I were still the only people involved in soccer shots, and we were running our operations out of our own homes, he in Charlotte and I from my Harrisburg home. And around the, the year 2009, we had grown to about 40 franchises. And what was really cool was that some of these franchisees were actually outperforming our original franchise business. And so things were heating up, if you will, getting a little bit more serious. And we realized, okay, we're going to have to do something about this. And so one of the things that we did was we invited Justin to come join us as a third partner. Justin was a guy who had spent his previous eight years with Auntie Anne's and some time with Hope International as well, but had really um, explored and experienced the franchising side of things from the franchisor side with Auntie Anne's and was somebody who was really helpful for that time in our business when we were really expanding on the franchise side of things. Around this time, Entrepreneur Magazine was kind enough to list us somewhere in some kind of listing as an up-and-coming and, and fast-growing franchise system, and that helped accelerate our growth. That led us to hiring somewhere in this period of time our first four employees just to help support our growing system. And I would say, too, that we really started paying close attention to our brand and partners like Artistic Imprints, who do a very, very good job at what they do, as well as Adidas and other vendors, really become important to brand consistency, which matters a great deal with franchising and growing something across the country. I don't know what the next era has for us, but I am calling it the next era. And um, we're entering this era I guess here's a map of where Soccer Shots is now. There's little red dots for where there is a Soccer Shots franchise unit. Annie, you might know better than me. Are there 120 franchises? Okay, there's 120 franchises. We are in approximately 31 states. Um, I know that there are nationwide, there are about 1,000 coaches this week running Soccer Shots programs. Approximately 50,000 little kids doing Soccer Shots this week. And our team includes about 15 full-time employees and a couple part-timers. And so clearly what we're le learning now as entrepreneurs and going through is, is that entrepreneurism requires 
leadership of a growing organization. And so it's becoming increasingly important that we're paying attention to the managerial staff that we're hiring and that performance is now not just up to, to me and to Justin and to Jeremy, but performance is measured in, in how staff and the growing team are working. Um, entrepreneurship for us in, in, in terms of grow, build, uh, supporting a growing system is, is forming and nurturing culture and community, um, leaning on outsiders, outside experience, people that are in the franchising industry that have gone before us that are very experienced. We're working with our franchise community and leaders within our system, so we've we've raised up some what we call council presidents, franchise council presidents who represent the community. This is a snapshot of our recent um, from our one of our conventions, and so we're, we have to build and, and work with a, a lot of relationships there with a growing system. I would say that there does not a day does not go by. I don't know if this will always be the case, but that there is a new opportunity. To, that, that is identified that either needs to be seized or put it on hold. And so this, um, this element of focus has become a, a consideration for us that there, there's all kinds of new opportunities. We, some are great to dive into and some we have to be careful and selective and choose to not to grow into. And probably one of my favorite parts of entrepreneurship is problem solving and you know, creatively imagining solutions to the challenges that, that we're faced with. And so these are all elements of this next era, and I'm excited to see how we get to apply some of those skill sets. So while thinking about entrepreneurship and um, preparing to share just a little bit today, there's another component of all of this that, that in terms of the evolution for me that is that top of mind is really social entrepreneurship and what does it mean you know, to be in business and, and what is this – what is the point of all of this? And so a couple of things come to mind. One is um, in 2009, we formed our own charitable arm, Division of Soccer Shots. It's called Soccer Shots Global Goals. Without going into great detail of it, it it's simply our charitable arm of Soccer Shots, which is designed to raise awareness and funds for organizations that are working in difficult communities around the United States and around the world who are using soccer as a means to you know, get kids off the streets into safe playing environments. And so the U.S. Soccer Foundation is a primary partner of ours. And uh, this picture is from Newark, New Jersey. Last year we raised funds and um, supported the construction of this field in a really difficult community in Newark, New Jersey. And so this is a, re a rewarding component of what we're able to do at Soccer Shots. And we've been able to bring our franchise community around this cause and others like it, and we're proud of doing that. But I would say even greater than that is um, just this opportunity, and this desire to do business with integrity, to contribute positively to our communities, and to work with meaningful purpose. And um, all of us at Soccer Shots and, and a few of our from our team are here. Justin, of course, is here. All of us are motivated by a desire to impact kids positively. It, it may be at the root of, of who we are and what we do. And... Um, curriculum was mentioned, I mentioned that each of our, our lesson plans has a character-forming word of the day. We have a chance to impact kids on a regular basis through what we're doing. And I was reminded recently of, um, of a little girl who I coached a couple of years ago. Her name is Skylin. I actually saw her two Saturdays ago. She was at a soccer shots class nearby. Mandy was the coach. And I had to stop in for something to connect with a parent, I believe. And I saw Skylin out there. And I hadn't seen Skylin for a few years. And there's Skylin. I remember Skylin as a brand new three-year-old. I was her coach um, at, a, at a gym in Hershey. It was a winter program. I remember it. She was this tiny little timid. She looks tiny and timid. She, then, now, you should have seen her then, this tiny little timid thing who was scared of me, her coach. She was not sure about this whole soccer shots thing. She wasn't sure about the group. She hadn't done a group activity before. And her parents were like, go on, Skylin, get out there. And, you know, after eight weeks of soccer shots, she had come along. She had figured out how to do the pullback move and how to, you know, escape the shark during sharks and minnows. And she had figured out she was okay, right, I'm laughing at what I do. And so when I had a chance to see Skylin two Saturdays ago, it's two years later, she's now five. I didn't recognize her at first, and I realized that's Skylin. Look at Skylin. She's out there scoring goals. She's tackling the ball, winning tackles. And so I, I, I saddled up next to her mom. 
And I said, look at Skyland. She's, she's tearing it up out there. And her mom was so proud. She was beaming. She said, Jason, Skyland's favorite thing to do is soccer shots. What, I, what she then told me is that Skyland has been in eight or nine consecutive seasons of soccer shots. She hasn't missed a season. And I didn't realize that. And she said, yeah. And, and to be honest with you, she's really turning into this confident kid. And especially when she's out on the soccer field. And it made me realize that this is just one little story of the impact that our coaches are having. And it really encouraged me and reminded me of, of the impact that we can have through what we do. The other part of that story is the fact that Mandy, my wife, was out there coaching. And I've really been thankful for this business at the local level where my two daughters, ages six and three, have been participants of Soccer Shots. They're also emerging little helpers. They like to, uh, to help with the administrative things that we do and carry the bag or whatever it is. And that Mandy has become an integral part of our operation as a key administrator and a good coach. And I'm, I'm just thankful that I have been able to you know, conjure together this, this business operation and this career that, that's showcasing something to my kids, that it's service-based and that it's positive and that it's meaningful. And I'm thankful that we're able to do that. Recently, Justin shared with me an article that someone from Peter Greer's staff wrote that I think may be hitting Christianity Today or already has. Chris Horst is a director of development, I think, at Hope International, and just wrote something that spoke true to me just about work and, and, and business and the value in it. And I'll get to this second point. This really stood out to me. It says, the gift of work is dignifying. Business done the right way blesses our communities and business relationships create opportunities to demonstrate our faith in word and deed. And, um, that really stuck out to me and, and resonated with, I think, what we do at Soccer Shots and something that makes me proud to be involved in what we do. Thanks again for having me. And I don't know if there's time, I don't know how long I spoke, but if there's time for maybe just a few, one or two, three questions. Justin, why don't you come up here and answer questions, <laughs> right? Now, hard questions, please. Justin Dreddy. He looks good today, by the way. Come on up. Yes. Just. <laughs> Our plan. Um, yeah, we, we do have a plan. Uh, I think one of the things that's funny, um, last time the three of us got together, we met for probably two days. We call it the J Team Summit for two days. And we do this maybe once every quarter. And we spent, spent probably the first hour talking about how do we meet. What, are, what kind of meetings do we need to have? And what do we discuss in those meetings? Um, and uh, one of the things that we realized that we have really not done a great job at is, is actually strategic planning. Um, and, um, and so we do have plans for our individual uh, spheres of, of, of responsibility. Um, this is really the first year, believe it or not, where we're, we're considering bringing a consultant in to help us plan for the next year to three years. Um, and so do we have a plan? We've been planning, but I wouldn't say that we've had a, a comprehensive plan. Um, and uh, we realize that's that's a shortcoming on our part, and we need to put work together. But we do have, we do see there's a, there's a tremendous opportunity for us. Um, I've been very fortunate to bring on some, some great people within our, our franchise system. And I think any good franchise system is dependent upon the franchisees that you choose and choose you. I mean, so, you know, while, you know, we do our part, I think what we've seen is we've had, had some early on, some really strong operators come and, and uh, you know, blessed to have them interested in, in expanding. So that's also been a, a, a positive thing for us. Um, and, and I'd say, what was it, about 35 to 40 percent of our franchisees that we currently have um, have come as a result of uh, referrals and so we're just trying to figure out the whole marketing thing and, and finding those those great people in order to continue to do that the question was what is the biggest challenge that we face in our business wow Jason do you have a oh, yeah um 
you know, the biggest challenge, I mean, Jason, Jason mentioned, I mean, we certainly have competition with like, you know, outward, um, I guess, uh, threats. Those we've decided to try not to be too worried about. I think maybe the biggest challenge for us is, um, is it, I, I'd say at this point, really staying ahead of our franchisees and, and providing value. I think with any franchise business, you know, when they first come in, they're really excited about the business and the reason why they chose you and they see the opportunity and the learning curve is steep and we have uh, hopefully something to share because we've done this a, a time or two. And, and, then, and then things kind of level off a little bit. And so they've learned a lot of what you have to offer. And so, you know, now our franchisees that have got, on, got in early and are experiencing continued success in year six, seven, eight, their needs are a lot different than in years one and two. And so, yet they're, they're paying royalties, you know. They were maybe not happy to write that check in the beginning. But they're like, yeah, this is great. I'm learning something. I'm starting a business. To, okay, now what have you done for me lately? I think that becomes a, a, a wonderful challenge in many ways because it, it, it prompts us to continue to look at what we do and, and what we need to do to, to take us to the next level. So I think that, that might be one of the bigger challenges that I see in this space. I don't know. Jason, do you have any? 